Let's learn about fleshy fruits. But first, let's review what we just learned about dry fruits, the particularly the ones that split at maturity to release the seeds. And, well, the most basic common one is called a capsule. A capsule consists of two more carpels. It splits in a different variety of ways. It can split along lines or sutures. It can break open at little valves at the tip. There can be pores around the, the top. It's a common fruit type that's um, found in a number of different families. It's um, a more specialized fruit, but an important one, considering it's in an important family, is the legume. The legume comes from one carpel. It comes from a unicarpel at gynecium, and it typically can split along both sutures, both lines, the marginal one and the midvein one, corresponding to that ancestral megasporophyll that um, fused to form the, the um, carpel. It's found in the fabulous Fabaceae and a few closely related families. A follicle is from a single carpel, and instead of splitting along two sutures, it only splits along one. Um, this is uh, not a particularly common fruit type, but, you know, it's distinctive enough that when we identify plants, we'll be able to uh, focus in on that. And it's um, especially well demonstrated in, in milkweeds. Uh, sort of a, another, um, a very unusual one as far as the number of families it's in, one, um, is in an important family nonetheless. It's the mustard family, Brassicaceae. And this is a sort of a, mo a modified capsule, and it's kind of a peculiarity of the anatomy that causes us to not be able to just call it a capsule and leave it at that. It has a partition, but instead of separating the two carpels, it goes across them. And it's a pretty characteristic shape. The long, narrow ones are called siliques. I think sleek, silic. And the short squat ones are called silicles, but anatomically they're basically the same, they're, they're just with a different shape. So those are the fruits of the mustard family. Taking a look at fleshy fruits, simple ones, you know, nothing, um, not having a, more than one ovary, more or less what you'd expect. There's a situation where we have um, two types that are very, very common, um, a berry and a droop. And there's not a whole lot of um, detailed explanation required here. So let's just, um, let's just focus on this, on this, um, these words, and then we'll see some photo examples. A berry is fleshy throughout. It can it typically contain several seeds, but they can be one seeded as well. Um, sometimes regions of a fruit are, are roughly characterized as the outer exocarp or pericarp, the middle section called the mesocarp, and the inner um, endocarp, sort of regions of a, of a fruit for differentiation of the types. Uh, berries are fleshy throughout. A droop um, is kind of like a berry, except fleshy on the outside, fleshy in the middle, but in the inside there's one seed and surrounded by a hard bony, what's called endocarp. It's like a stone fruit. Um, in fact, examples will make this clearer of berries. Well, um, um, blueberries are berries, tomatoes are berries, bananas are berries, but, as we'll see later, some of the things with berry in their name, um, raspberries, strawberries, uh-uh, they're not berries. And um, the droops, um, stone fruits, like peaches and plums and cherries, they are um, widely distributed in wild plants, too. Well, often they get to be called berries, like, you know, the ones you see on um, poison ivy, for example. You'd say berries white run in fright. And they're not actually berries, they're droops. Um, a lot of, um, of fleshy wild fruits are actually droops, which kind of makes sense because the seed inside the plant doesn't want to have it be digested by the disperser. So if a bird or a mammal eats the fruit with the adaptation being to disperse it through, through feces, it's really good if the seed doesn't get digested. So having a hard bony endocarp around the seed so it survives the trip through the digestive tract um, a nice adaptation. So droops are really common. Peepo, peepo is kind of a special one. It's kind of like a berry, um, except it has a leathery rind, a little bit firm on the outside. Cucumbers are peepos, squashes peepos, pumpkins are peepos, watermelons are peepos. And um, it's only found in one family, a family called the Cucurbitaceae, the gourd family. And um, it's kind of a neat family, not especially common, but it's nice to be able to recognize that it's a, a special kind of a fruit. So let's look at some pics. 
Here's a picture of a, a berry. They're fleshy throughout. They often have many seeds, but they can also have one seed. This is a plant called poke, Phytolacca americana. It's um, hmm, it's called poke weed, but um, shouldn't have weed in its name. Maybe it should. Well, anyway, it's it's a native plant, and it's a little bit aggressive and annoying in places. But it's a native plant, and oh, by the way, it was the favorite food or a favorite food of the now extinct um, passenger pigeon. So if you want to uh, maybe manage for passenger pigeons, plant a lot of poke. Plant, plant out a po lot of poke. Phytolacca americana. This is poke in uh, fruit. Um, and here's poke in flower. Um, yeah, I grew this giant poke weed. I tried it with all my neighbors with things like this. And yeah, this is the world's biggest poke weed. I just didn't bear to pull it up. Look how pretty it is. It's huge. It's an annual. It's an annual. That all happens in one year. Goodness. Um, droops. Droops are really common. Most people look at droops, they'd say they're berries. And you really can't tell them until you um, split it open or cut it with a razor and discover there's a stone inside. Um, a one single seed surrounded by a bony endocarp. This is a plant called um, um, Viburnum prunifolium, black haw. And it's, um, it's, got a, it's got a droop. Droops are really common. So here is black haw in fruit, and here's black haw in flower. It's... Um, Flowering now, by the way, it's um, May 21st. It's uh, blooming merrily in the woods around us. And here's a peepo, kind of a specialized berry. It's uh, fleshy on the outside, and it's got a tuft rind. There's some other aspects of the cucurbitaceae. It's kind of cool. They have um, unisexual flowers. The plants are monoecious. They have both of the male and the female flowers. But... Um, the ones in this picture that are at the top are the male flowers, and the ones at the bottom with the sort of spines on them, those are the female flowers, and they have an inferior ovary. And that's what a, a peepo is, kind of a specialized thing. So coming up next, we're going to see some really peculiar variations on a theme. We're going to see some examples of plants that kind of break the a uh, ripened ovary containing seeds rule for what fruits are.